I like being able to stay put and hey, make picks actually, at these spots. You know, let's uh, let's go there right yep. now to Kansas City. The Seahawks the are making a pick. With the 108th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Anthony Bradford, guard, LSU. Well, I just that mentioned guard out of LSU. I was talking about Damian Lewis a few years ago. That was in the third round. Here you go in the fourth round. It's an Anthony. It's not Anthony Richardson. It's the great Anthony Bradford, who and is also a guard out of LSU. LSU. And I have great news for you. Yeah. Wait. Wait. 345. Oh, it's a big guy. It's a big guy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's what they need. They need big fellas up front. And if you look at the Seahawks roster right now, uh, Phil Haynes, one-year deal, right? Gabe Jackson, gone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, Damian Lewis, decision as to whether or not he's going to be here long-term after his four years are up. It's been kind of an up and down, some good, some bad. Was great as a rookie and sort of regressed a little bit after that. So now you got Anthony Bradford, who is a 340-pound moose. Yep, Anthony Bradford has also played three different positions along the offensive line at LSU. He had a 29-game career. He started uh, primarily at right guard, though was also played at left tackle. Mm. And you know that Seattle has always loved a lot of versatility on the offensive line. I'm glad they've gotten away from positional versatility with defensive linemen playing on the offensive line, but I know <laughs> that they also do love someone where it's like, you know what, Damian Lewis could play center in an emergency mm -hmm. but he's also our starting guard i think that that's what and for that matter um is evan brown uh the center that they added in free agency he yep. was uh has been both a center and a guard so once again they go for a guy where they can move him around a little bit i think you may like uh the lance zerline analysis on this oh. so again i'm not going to pretend like i was a uh, huge uh bradford fan at any point in my life i've this been is, a bradford fan my entire I could, life i could see that yes uh bradford doolittle right that's the guy isn't that the guy from uh, espn who does baseball stuff oh, here's totally. what lance zerline says first of all if you were worried that this was one of those overreaches he could have been that in the seventh round. Who sounds like that? I don't know. That's how people sound. Okay. Lance Zerline says draft projection round four. Ooh. He was taken in round quattro. Four. Uh, his NFL comp, I know you're very, com very, very familiar with Jamon Brown. Right, Jamon Brown. Of course, of course, he's one of the one of the great comps. I've also that you would have been a draft. Jamon Brown fan my I, entire I life. I figure that. A lot of people. Let me read you what he says about him though. Massive. Scheme specific guard prospect with plus power, but obvious athletic limitations. Bradford has functional quickness as a pulling guard and can work from one block to the next with adequate timing. He can be effective as a single blocker, but really shines on double teams where he can help clear the pathway. His lack of lateral quickness and reactive athleticism can put him in a bind against one-gapping defensive tackles and sub-package rushers with short area twitch. I could have told you that. Bradford has the potential to become an eventual starter for gap and power teams. Oh, that's good. So that, to me, is pretty good value in the fourth round. You're getting a guy that fits what you want to do, which is run the football, maul people, and move them out of the way. Um I have actual analysis, but I would just like to add that functional quickness mm -hmm. is uh, my favorite line from that scouting report. <laughs> and it makes me think of like when you take a Hot Pocket out of the uh, microwave and you drop it, but then catch it with your other hand. That's oh, functional whoa. quickness. You yes. know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm quick enough to function, um, but not at all quick athletically. Just it's functional quickness. Yeah. I'm not dropping my lunch on the floor. Well, that's good. That's more functional that's kind of uh, I dexterity, I think yeah. I would say. Well, that's, yes. It's probably a better example. Um, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about this um, before they made the pick, but when we were talking about potentially offensive linemen or defensive linemen going, we talked so much about defense all season long for good reason. What if they leave this draft with more offensive picks than defensive picks? I, I hadn't even considered it, and I know it seems silly. You got six picks left, and maybe it's 50-50. You still need offensive players, but, I mean, what if, you know, they what? walk away with a great corner – a, a potentially good uh, edge rusher and then just some random dudes uh, on defense. Yeah, it's entirely possible. I mean, it, you know, it would kind of blow you away a little bit, given everything we've seen watching this team the last you were few years. 25th in scoring. Yeah. 30th against the run. Yeah. And I, I think what it would tell me more than anything, Stacy, is that they have a firm commitment to drafting the best player they see. 